Herbs and Spices, Unit 9, Part 2. Cinnamon, the fragrant bark. Cinnamon is the bark of an evergreen tree. It's in the laurel family and native to tropical regions of Sri Lanka and India. Typically, the bark is harvested from two-year-old stems and the outer bark is scraped away the inner bark then curls into cinnamon sticks referred to as quills. Here's a photograph showing the uh, quills. And you can also see the cinnamon ground. Black pepper is the most widely used spice in the world. It is the ground up seed of the Piper nigrum plant. It was once the most valuable of all spices and drove much of the spice trade. Pepper's bite is due to its volatile oils and it begins to lose its flavor as soon as it's ground. As that outer shell is broken, the volatile oils can begin to evaporate into the atmosphere and the flavor is lost. Uh, a good reason for using fresh ground pepper. This is a uh, black peppercorn magnified. These things are quite small normally, usually smaller than the size of a pea. This is an illustration of the Piper nigrum plant. And you can see it's a uh, vining plant, the seeds of which make black pepper. There's also another kind of pepper or another plant that we call pepper, and those are plants in the capsicum family. Um, and bell pepper, possibly the, one of the best known, is grown for the flesh of the fruit rather than the seed. It's the most widely cultivated pepper plant in the world, and it's actually in the tomato family. The genus is capsicum family Solanaceae. Capsicum annuum has been used medicinally as a painkiller in the past. And yet another kind of pepper, chili peppers, are also capsicum peppers. So these are capsicum peppers and they're all various types of bell peppers grown for the flesh and usually eaten with the flesh either raw or cooked slightly. Chili peppers are also grown for the flesh, but are typically used um, chopped or even dried and ground. Cloves, another type of spice native to the Spice Islands, Cloves are the unopened flower buds of a plant called Eugenia carophyllata, an evergreen in the myrtle family. They must be harvested unopened. Once the flowers open, they're useless as spice, losing the scent and the flavor. These are fresh cloves. You can see that the flowers haven't opened yet on uh, some of these and on others it appears that the flowers have opened or are in the process of opening. These are the dried flower buds that we know as cloves. Nutmeg and mace, two different spices, both come from the same plant and actually come from close to the same place in the plant. The plant is Myristica fragrance, and mace is made from something called the aril, which is a net-like structure that is, surrounds the seed inside the fruit. Nutmeg is made from the actual seed itself. This illustration shows nutmeg and mace, and you can see um, mace 
and this isn't as clear as a, as a later picture, um, the actual seed, but wrapped around that seed before being separated by people are the arrows or the arrow that makes up mace. Take a look at this next photograph. Here we go. Here you can see, <coughs> pardon me, the seed inside the fruit. The fruit is not used at all as uh, either one of these spices. The red net-like arrow that you can see kind of stretching across the seed here is where mace is derived. The seed that you can see, the dark brown seed that you can see, is where nutmeg comes from. Ginger is a rhizome. So, so far we've had bark of a tree, seeds of a plant, um, seeds and arrow of a plant. Ginger is a rhizome, which is a specialized root of a plant called Zingiber officinal. It's a small herbaceous perennial plant. And a rhizome stores sugars manufactured by the leaves, typically. Um, turmeric is also derived from a rhizome and is in the same family as, as ginger. Turmeric is used both as a spice and as a yellow dye. And it's used as a yellow dye for clothes, but it's also used as a yellow dye to impart more intense color to food. Here's a photograph of a ginger rhizome. And the ginger plant. And you can see this is a single plant, but the rhizome down here gives rise to all the individual shoots coming up from it. And the rhizomes can also branch out in other directions like this, and then they would give rise to shoots coming up from that. Here's a recipe for ginger ale. Won't go over the whole thing right now because you can just look at it at your leisure. Um, but it's actually quite easy to make at home, uh, carbonated uh, naturally using yeast and uh, worth trying and worth experimenting with. This is a photograph of the turmeric plant, the upper part, but the turmeric root or rhizome that from which we get the spice is in this photograph. You can see it has this very bright color and it has the ability to maintain that bright color even when it's um, powdered and dried. Saffron, another spice, this one comes from the stigma of a flower, the crocus sativus. The term sativus is used as a specific epithet for plants and it essentially means widely cultivated. If a plant has been grown a lot um, at the time that the plant was named, um, often the uh, specific epithet uh, sativus was given. The only way to harvest saffron is by hand. You have to carefully remove the stigmas from the flowers, bundle them together, and dry them. This labor-intensive process makes saffron currently the most expensive spice in the world. Here you see a uh, crocus sativus flower and these red structures sticking out are the stigmas and that's the part of the flower that's carefully pinched out by hand. Tied into bundles like this and dried. Again, this whole process is hand work and makes for very expensive spice. Vanilla, probably not thought of exactly as a spice, uh, the way we think of pepper or 
uh, ginger or something like that. It um, definitely was used as a spice, and it's used to flavor a lot of different things. We typically think of it in terms of uh, ice cream or something like that, but uh, vanilla is used uh, in a lot of different foods as spices. Vanilla comes from the seeds of an orchid native to Mexico. The genus is vanilla. Um, and originally attempts to cultivate the vanilla plant outside Mexico and Central America didn't work because the vanilla plant has a symbiotic relationship uh, between the vine that produces the vanilla orchid and a local species of bee. And without having these three things together, the vanilla orchid plant, the vine, and the bee, vanilla couldn't be uh, successfully propagated and raised outside of uh, its native range. Techniques have been developed to overcome that now, and vanilla is being grown in other places. The techniques used are hand pollinating of the flowers. It's also a very labor intensive process, but it's grown in areas where labor is inexpensive. Um, vanilla harvesting is also done by hand, and that's, again, another labor intensive process. Um, the seeds are taken out of the pods, the, the, the fruit of a vanilla is a pod. The seeds are taken out of the pods, dried in the sun, uh, and exposed to the sun during the day, but covered with blankets at night. The imitation vanilla flavor that we can buy in a store is actually derived from wood pulp and coal tar. Give you pause to think about that. This photograph shows some dried vanilla pods, and these pods are split open and the seeds taken out. The seeds of vanilla are quite small and uh, are then ground even further when pressing out the essential oils. But the seeds themselves ground can be used as spice and flavoring, not just the oil. Here's a photograph of green vanilla pods actually growing on the vanilla orchid plant. And a flower of the vanilla plant, quite an attractive flower. And a vanilla plantation showing individual vanilla orchids now planted on, you know, tied to stakes to raise them up and make it easier to harvest the uh, pods.